This tutorial is for Windows 10, 11. First thing, I do suggest you go to insignia.live to make an account. You're gonna need to buy a converter cable. It's basically a USB cable with the female end where you can connect your original Xbox controller. You could pick one of these up on either eBay or Amazon for less than 10 bucks. You want to go to the website xemu.app. XEMU is the original Xbox simulation that we're going to be using. Alright, now with the Exignia.live invitation out the way and also the XEMU emulator installed, we're going to go ahead and get your controller for the original Xbox connected to the PC. I will go over a few ways just in case since not all original Xbox controllers will function on the same software. Real quickly, let me get this out the way, I'm going to explain XBCD, which is the open source drivers we're going to be installing for your computer for it to work. Big shout out to sconfig. On his website, sconfig.com, he has a section on XBCD, and he has a list of old school Xbox controllers that are compatible with this driver. And to check if your controller is compatible with the driver, you could go to device manager and once you plug in your original Xbox controller, there's going to be a section under other devices. And there you'll see unknown devices. And that's going to be your Xbox original controller. You want to go ahead and click on properties. Then click on details. Under where it says value, it should give you a vendor ID. Now going back to sconfig.com. Under the original Xbox controller section where it has all the product and vendor IDs, you could match your original controller with one of these vendor IDs. And if your vendor ID matches the one on the compatibility list, then you're good to continue on to the next step. So now we gotta install the XBCD driver, which is the driver for your PC to read the original Xbox controller. If you're running Windows 10 and 11 32-bit system, then you should be all set. It should be working fine. But if you're on Windows 10 and 11 64-bit system, then we need a bypass on the heavy driver verification. For this, we need to disable the integrity checking in Windows 10 or 11. Simply hit Windows key, then System Settings, then Windows Update, then Advanced Option, then click on Recovery, and lastly, on Advanced Setup, click on Restart Now. Let the system reboot and it should take you to the advanced menu. In the menu, click on troubleshoot, then advanced option, then startup settings, then click restart. Give it a moment to load, then the number options will be displayed numbered from 1 through 9. Now hit the number 7 key, which is option number 7 to disable driver signature enforcement. The computer will reboot itself. After you disable the signature protection, go into Device Manager and click on Other Devices. Click Update Driver Software. Click Browse My Computer. Let me pick from this list. Click Next. Then click Next again. Click on Have Disk. And then click on Browse. And look for XBCD Drivers. Click on XBCD. Then click Next again. Click install this driver software anyways. On the device manager window, a new tab will appear under the section human interface device. Now you'll see the XBCD controller now being read as a proper controller. For some people, XBCD won't function properly. Either the controller isn't reading or there's a specific button that's not being read properly. For that, there's a second method to install another software. To make use of the XB2X input, you'll need the VGM bus driver installed. Download XB2X input and extract the entire zip somewhere. The controllers will need to be set up to use the Win USB driver. The included install driver.bat. That can take care of setting up these drivers for you. Install the driver.bat. Run as administrator. Once the batch file is completed, you should restart your computer to make sure it takes effect. With the driver set up, run the XB2X input and an icon for it should appear on the system tray. Plug in your original Xbox controller to your PC. After a few seconds, XB2X input should detect it and a notification will appear once it starts translating it over to X input. 
To view the status of the XB2X input, just hover over the icon. Any details about the connected device should appear shown on the tooltip. Now sometimes when you connect your Xbox controller to the XBCD software, it won't pick up as a 360 controller. We need a specific software to let XCMU read the controllers as keyboard binds. To do this, we need to download a separate application. Now on Google, type in anti-micro x software and click on the github page and download and install the anti-micro x software. XAMU does not recognize the XBCD driver as a gamepad. That's why we need the anti-micro x software to map keyboard keys to the original Xbox controller. Just copy these keybinds down if you're having trouble with the emulator reading your controller. Now your Xbox original controller is ready to use. Click on machine and then click on settings and then network. And then you just want to type these settings. And then just click add and then enable. And you should be connected to the internet. We're going to hop on over to Rocky 5's Xbox soft modding tool. Scroll along down, and you're going to download the previous version, and just click on download. Click on extra disk, click on Xbox soft modding tool, and then download and extract, and then just launch that file as an Xbox game. Now just click restart, and we're going to leave this in the background for a little bit while we do something else. You want to look up an app called FileZilla. You want to download FileZilla, open up FileZilla, you want to click on edit, settings, and then on settings click on active mode, and you want to match this, just type this in, use the following IP, unclick this box, and just click OK. Next we want to click on file and then click on site manager. Now to connect to the Xbox just copy these settings. The user and password is going to be Xbox all over case. Make sure these are matching. Make sure everything is active and all you want to do is just hit connect and you should be connected so next we're gonna install the xbox dashboard so let's head back to rocky 5 so once you're back on rocky 5 you want to click on extras soft mod dashboards ms dash retail and this is going to be your xbox original dashboard so you just go ahead and download that so just go ahead and extract everything and copy it want to copy everything and then just drag and drop everything into the root c file I already have it on there, so I'm not going to drag and drop it. But yeah, it should look like this after. Next, we're going to get the save file to use the exploit. So next, you want to go over to the Insignia Live program. Click on the link, and then click on Releases. And then right here, you're going to choose the game that you have. You want to click on Tony Hawk 4. And then you're going to download it. Extract it. And right here that says U data. That's where you're gonna put it in in your E drive in the U data. So click it one more time. So this one right here, 415, you're gonna wanna copy it and just paste it on here. Or just drop it. Uh, just drag and drop it right here. I already have it copied right here. And that's it.
You're all done. You can now connect to the Exignia Live. So just hit exit. Now you're done with this. After you did all those steps, you can restart your, your Xbox emulator, XCMU. So you should be able to have a dashboard now. All right. Now let's connect to the Xbox Live. Let's register to Exignia. So for that, we're gonna load a disk. And we're gonna load Tony Hawk Pro Skater 4. And just click restart. All right, in this section, you wanna click on Free Skate. And choose any character. Then choose play level, hit created park, then hit load park, then yes, then hack xbox, then ok, and then play park. That should lead you to the exploit. You wanna, with the d-pad you wanna go to register xbox. And then it should register your Xbox. Alright, cool. Mine, mine's already registered. So other than that, just quit a uh, setup assistant. Alright, now you want to exit everything, eject disk. Then it's going to take you to the dashboard. So I'm signed in already. But we're going to make you sign in. We're going to sign you up your own Xbox Live account. I just go to settings, network settings, then hit connect. And there, I'm connected to the internet, Xbox Live, baby. Now that we're done with the network setup, you should have received the email after registering your account with a 25 digit subscription code. So go back to, to the main menu dashboard. You wanna go to Xbox Live. So just hit new account. First, select your country you are in. If your country is not listed, please select the one that is geographically closest to you. Take the time to read the terms of use and agree to it. And enter your gamer tag that you want. If the gamer tag is not available, alternatives will be provided. Enter the subscription code sent to your email. If successful, you'll see the subscription information. The service is completely free. Make sure you entered everything correctly. If not, you'll see an error. The sign-up procedure would then ask you for credit card details and information. Do not put your real details. Use the valid credit card info they give you, which is 41 11 11 11 11 11 11 11. As the dashboard validates it, enter your email address. Make sure it's the same email address you signed up with or you'll get an invalid code error. Finally, press yes to create and activate your account. From here, you can now play online on the supported list of games. Some original Xbox titles will need the game's patch update or DLC content installed to allow you to join online matches on Xbox Live. So some games right off the bat will let you download the title update from the menu. Just sign into Xbox Live and it should automatically download. Let's see if the DLCs can be downloaded from here. Right, let me just sign into Xbox Live and see if I could get the downloadable contents on here. Yeah, what? Alright. That's a lot of fucking blocks, by the way. What the fuck? God damn, Jabba. <laughs> but yeah, I guess some games you could just download the content and the patch update from the Xbox Live menu. I, that, that's pretty weird to me. Usually you have to jump through hoops. Okay. 
and that one's downloaded. So I could play this game online now. And then after you uh, just hit Xbox Live, sure, continue. Then after when you hit Xbox Live, it's going to tell you you must update your system. It's basically the patch update for the game. Just click OK, it'll download the patch update. Xbox Live again. Just click on downloadable content. It should take you to the downloadable content menu. Just give it a second and sign in. And yeah, just download each of them. That's crazy, you can just install it right here. Once you download them, they should be on your hard drive. Okay. So I guess I can just install it like that. To see the list of Xbox games that need a patch update or need the DLCs downloaded, head over to digix.net. Links to everything will be in the description below. You can also look it up on Google. Click on DigiX. Once inside DigiX, you want to head over where it says Downloads and click on that. Then you want to scroll down to where it says Xbox Original Content. Click on it. After that, you want to hit Downloadable Content. Scroll down till you see the Xbox Offline Xbox Live Downloadable Content DLC Installers and click on that link. I want to give a big thank you to the usernames Hoffman and Harcroft and also everyone else who contributed to the DigiX forum. Scroll down to the page a little and it will give you a brief explanation about the page. It says, These downloadable content installers will install and assign the Xbox Live downloadable content to work on your modified Xbox without the need for modified executable files. Xbox Live for the original Xbox closed down on April 15, 2010. So it is no longer possible to purchase any of these DLCs hosted here. These installers are now the only way to install and use the DLCs. And if you scroll down a little bit more past this, you'll see a section that goes over the installation process. This tutorial was made for a jailbroken original Xbox console, but the steps are also the same for XEMU. Right below from the installation guide, you'll find a section that has the links to the downloadable content. Note that it says that if a game has both DLC and a title update, both will be included in the DLC package. But if you just simply need the title updates only, just scroll down a little bit more and you'll find a section where you'll find the title updates along with a few other separate live only content to download. So right here on the how to install area, we're just going to go over a couple things. At first it says, if you are having issues running this installer, try using a different dashboard or build the content of the folder into an ISO and run it as a burn CD. So we're going to do this, this first one. If you already have a copy of the content installed, this is important, remove it from your game uh, prior installation. So just remove it from like the memory place on your Xbox. You should have like an HDD drive. Go into that. Find the place where you have your uh, game update. So once you find a file you want, say like, um, sure, I want this one, Counter Strike DLC. I'll click on it. And it'll start to download. Once you have it downloaded, just extracted. I have it right here. This is a list of of games that I need to update. Like I said earlier, it says right here, the DLC and title updates will be included in the DLC package. So this already has the DLC and the title update. So we're just gonna run that. I don't need this. This is just the title update. And this is both DLC and title update. You must play the game on your console first for the installer to work. So simply just boot up the game you wanna install. Where is it? Hunter and Reckoning. Let me open that one up. It's pretty cool. I didn't know this one had a DLC. Once the game is running, tap on Xbox Live 
or multiplayer option or story mode if it doesn't have any Xbox Live or multiplayer options. Let the game run for like a minute. I guess we're gonna search up Team Avalanche Quicks. And right here, Team Avalanche Quicks. So just click on the first one. And right here, it's gonna tell you a, a description what Quix is and right here you can just download it so click this and just uh, extract it and install it and it just tells you right here it's just a simple file management and ISO creation tool which we need to make the content installer into an ISO so once you have that installed I have it right here just open it up All right, so get your DLC, and you want to extract that motherfucker. Extract it, and now you have it on there. Should be in a folder format. Okay, on here, just click on create ISO and under source, local folder, and you want to boot up, I mean, you want to get that folder you just extracted. So just click on the DLC you have, click OK. So once that's loaded, click on Create ISO, save that up, and it's gonna save my files uh, created. So I want to see if it is. So I load the disk. No. Oh, it worked. Fuck yeah. Nice. All right. So once you're on the little DLC menu, so these two are just the downloadable content that it has. That it has. These are just the only downloadable content that it has, unfortunately. No patch update, no extra maps, so I just gotta get them. Costume don't look that good, but whatever. We got him. Oh, it should be good. Check disc. Load this. Well, I, I, I really don't know if it's gonna work like this, but here's to helping. Oh, and it did work. So... <clears throat> These are all the extra map packs, different game types. Launch installer too. This is a patch update. And there. Alright, this is just older updates. Now we could just install that other DLC. Install map packs. These are all the map packs. Let's get that. Got all this good shit. Two. 
just want to leave. And that's how you get the DLCs. Like in Sun Games, like you saw earlier, DLCs, you could, get, you could just get them from the menu. Or if you can't get the DLCs like that, then you have to do a little extra jumping through hoops like I just showed you with quicks and all that. Fair and simple. And now you can just hit up some friends, start some lobbies. And if you need any more information, I recommend going towards Insignia.com and then just go into their Discord. Yeah, right here in the Insignia Discord. It'll give you a bunch of information of what's uh, going on right now. Yeah, it just gives you information on title updates like right here. Any support. Anything you need. Any information that you need. If you're having issues or you can't run a certain thing. Be happy. You know, they'll be happy to help you out right here. And also you have voice lobbies if you want to jump in. Like online games and stuff like that. And then yeah. A lot of people just chat on here. So this is really good to just browse and just talk to people you always want to check back on insignia.com to see who's online to see what what's going on it depends very on who's online on the time of day there's like worldwide so there's you know it could be people online when you're asleep it could be the opposite it depends on who plays and who doesn't this is one one of the ways i want to push people to get interested in playing online with friends on here. I just wanted to do my due diligence, make people interested. Hopefully they, you know, use the service, play with some friends. Alright, I'm just going to leave it right there. I got nothing else to add. Big shout out to everybody in the community who helped out. And that's all I got. Take care.